Welcome to a very special edition of the Character Sheet, comicbook.com's official tabletop and fantasy video channel. I am Christian Hoffer, and I am joined by an RPG legend, James Sutter, who is one of the creators of Starfinder and Pathfinder. Welcome, James. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Uh, so, um, you know, and... Now you've you've been gone from Paizo for for a few times working on some yeah, other projects. Yeah, I stepped down as creative director of Starfinder in uh, 2017, right after I was in charge of the game all through its development and launch. And then I kind of decided to go out on a high note. You know, the game launched and was a big success, and I said I want to go write other stuff. So I've been working on mostly like young adult novels right at the moment. Uh, but you are coming back to the Starfinder Damn. franchise. And that is what we are actually here to talk about today, as we're here to talk about Starfinder Angels of the Drift, which is a new comic coming out in June yeah. uh, by, by Dynamite. Uh, can, can you tell me a little bit about the comic? Yeah, so it's, you know, if people are fans of the Pathfinder comics, this has sort of a similar flavor in that it's an adventuring party, but of course, Starfinder is a science fantasy campaign setting. So it's all, you know, space wizards and laser ninjas. And this, uh, this comic, I think people have been waiting for for a long time because it brings in the iconic characters who are sort of the characters since the beginning of the game who have represented the various classes in the game. And so it was really a joy to come back to these characters and bring them in as a starship crew who is trying to help a sort of robotic angel character take faster than light technology to a previously uncontacted world. And of course, uh, it doesn't go quite that simply for our uh, band of mercenaries and miscreants. So let's talk a little bit about the Iconics. Um... You know, that's because that's one of the things that Paizo does differently than some other tabletop games and that it has these iconics that represent the characters. So instead of like generic, you know, character art that appears in all their books, it's always the same character. So when, you know, um, you know, a, a character of a certain class, you know, appears, you see the iconic and you exactly. Know, what goes into the development of these iconics? Because I'm always fascinated by because they, they all seem to have like fully fleshed out personalities backgrounds yeah. characters so and and you're the right person to ask because yeah you were yeah really involved from starfinder well, from and, start. and so this is one of those things where we first started with the idea of iconics with pathfinder just because we needed a reference so that we didn't have to explain to every new artist what makes a fighter different from a ranger you know we mm -hmm. could just say draw this character um but we quickly discovered that seeing the same characters over and over the audience really wanted to know who these people were, like what their stories were. And they sort of became the main characters of our setting without uh, us ever really intending it. And so then we started writing backstories for them. And so when it came time to do Starfinder, we knew that this was going to be important sort of from the get-go, that each one of these characters would be the avatar of their class and often of their species as well. And so we very carefully, you know, charted out, uh, you know, which characters would be which species and like what, all the rules elements, but then also tried to set their personalities, tried to make sure that we knew from the beginning who they would be. So you've got, you know, Quig is our rat folk mechanic who is always, mm -hmm. you know, tinkering and is kind of a hothead. Um, or we've got uh, Keskadai, who's a, the you know, he's the medic for the team and also the mystic, one of the casters, uh, but he's also a priest of the death goddess. So, you know, he'll definitely use that power to patch you up as the medic. But if you die, that's, you know, that's all part of the process. Like, that's fine, too. Um, and so, uh, you know, the captain of the team is our human character, Navasi, who's sort of a Han Solo-ish, fast-talking, you know, her mouth gets her into trouble, but then she can talk her way out of it sort of character. Um, and then we've also got Obozaya, the lizard folk, or sorry, not lizard folk, but they're Vesk in Starfinder. Mm -hmm. But... You can imagine a big lizard. Uh, and she's our, you know, our hardcore former soldier mercenary. And then we've got another new character that I'm very excited about um, named Cyravel, who's our precog. And so that class is all about bending time and sort of uh, getting glimpses of the future. And something that really excited me about her is she's got uh, a chronic illness that leads her in a, leaves her in a hover chair a lot of the time. And so mm -hmm. that was something that for me was kind of important to write uh, as actually my wife has a lot of the same issues. And so it was nice to be able to bring some of that experience to that character as well. Uh, so were there any sort of 
rules or you know like one of the interesting things about writing licensed comics of any kind um is that you know like you're you're you 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 are writing a story um but you you're writing a story that's not only a publisher you know for a publisher but that publisher is beholden to a license holder but in your case you're literally one of the people who created the story (laughs) i know it's weird so were there any like surprising like third rails like oh you can't go there james or anything like that i mean not really it's always weird to come back to a sandbox that you helped build but that now belongs to somebody else right it's like it's like driving past your childhood house where you're like that's my house but it's not my house anymore um but fortunately i've got a great relationship with the folks at paizo and i do you know keep up on what they're doing so there weren't any big surprises but there was a lot of you know here's uh, sort of what they wanted out of the comic series. They knew they wanted something that tied into this big setting wide event called the drift crash, uh, which is when the hyperspace dimension called the drift suddenly starts acting up and shunting people out of it at random. And so they knew they wanted to tie into that. And so I said, okay, I'll make the story about that. And they knew some of the characters they wanted to include, which was fine with me because I love all the iconic characters. So, um, so yeah, so it was actually pretty easy uh, to write for, but at the same time, anytime you're writing game fiction, there's always that point where you think up something really cool. Oh, this will look so good. And then you realize that that spell doesn't work exactly the way you thought it did, or that character ability, they actually wouldn't get to a high, a higher level. And so you have to just, you got to work within the rules. And fortunately, I um, back on Pathfinder, I used to be in charge of the novel line. And okay. so I would I would edit all of the tie in fiction. So I'm very familiar with that process of making sure that the rules and the story work together. And as I always told my writers, you know, these rules can seem arbitrary, but they're an attempt to represent the reality that these characters live in. So you can't break them because they're just describing how this world actually works and so you got to play within the framework now do you need any knowledge about starfinder to 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 read the starfinder comic no no i think and that's something that i really like about it is i think it gives you enough you know enough easter eggs so that deep fans of the game will see lots of things and go oh i know what that is Mm -hmm. but i think that if you're just coming to it fresh uh it's no different than coming to a star wars or something like that where like it's a very highly developed universe but hopefully we can bring you into it uh and make it fun now i wanted to kind of actually go back a little bit because since you mentioned the pathfinder novels you know one of the interesting like back and forths with you know pathfinder with dungeons and dragons (laughs) is is you know they're more than just a game they're also a brand and people want more like you know ways to get into those get into those worlds and get into it and there's kind of this like ebb and flow you know where you know pathfinder for years had you know the novels they had the comics and a lot of that went away video games yeah video games and you know, and and you know, do you do you think that you know the Starfinder comic and the Pathfinder comic that is also coming out here soon, and you know, we, and we have Abomination Vaults, the video game that's coming out later this year. Do you right. think that this is the start of kind of like a, we we've seen kind of an ebb, and now are do you think that the flow is going to come and we're going to see more of these like tie-in things that you know because Pathfinder the and Starfinder both games really you know seem to have a little bit more of a. Uh, market awareness due to events that may have happened earlier. Yeah, (laughs) right, right. Well, and also they've just had a lot of time to grow. You know, it's Mm -hmm. been uh, a long time coming that we've been building this stuff. Um, And, you know, I say we, even though I'm not an employee anymore, like you never really leave, you know, it's always a piece of my heart will always be at these settings and these games, but I think they're doing great. And I think that we will continue to see more and more because Paizo seems to be, really invested in that idea of letting other people take this world, this game, this content and make new stuff with it. I think that there's, there's sort of two ways to go. You can either lock everything down and be really controlling, or you can say, Hey, everybody just make stuff and we'll all benefit. And I think that they're leaning more towards the latter, uh, which is great for me because I would love to write more comics. (laughs) I think this has been a lot of fun. Um, So, I, I do have to ask you an RPG question. 
Go for um, it. You know, later this year, Paizo is actually coming out with like a, I, I forget exactly how they are rebranding it. The like, it's it's the, basically Star Starfinder Unchained, but you know. Um, oh really? Yeah. Oh you. Oh, am I the one that's telling you about this? Maybe I've had I've <laughs> I've had my head down, you know, writing stuff, so I oh. haven't I haven't kept up on it. Yeah, there there it's it's not like Starfinder Second Edition. It's kind of like what they did with Pathfinder Unchained. Uh, you know, right. nothing to do with the. Also, they're doing the Pathfinder Remaster, but that's a different. Right. That's that's right. a different animal. But you know, they're they're kind of like making some tweaks to some different things. And I was kind of curious because you you made you you yeah. were one of the big forces in Starfinder. Like, what what improvements or what changes do, would you, you know? Having like you know, not only built the game from the ground up, and you know now you're coming back to that world. And I'm sure you have played countless hours. Yeah. Like what you know um. You know, what sort of improvements do you hope they uh, make? Or, or is there any improvements that you hope they make? Oh, like, there's, there's always things you can do. Um, I feel like for me, it's less about improvements and more just about expansion. I feel yeah, like especially okay. with science fiction, there's so many things you can do and so many things we wanted to do in the core rule book that we just didn't have space for. You know, that mm. was that book was... Uh, a monster to put together. We had one year to create the game from the ground up and the book is beautiful, but it has, you know, this giant rule set that had to be almost as complex as Pathfinder and it needed setting information and it needed a starship combat mini game and it needed conversion rules. Like it needed a thousand pages of content that we managed to squish down into 500 some. And so there were, of course, were many good ideas that were left out. And over the years, you know, some of them have popped up and whatnot. But I feel like anytime you have a science fiction game, there's as many opportunities for ex for expansion as there are different types of science fiction. So like mm -hmm. getting more stuff with mechs, getting more, you know, different types of, you know, starship combat, getting different, uh, just really anything you could think of in terms of what stories would you like to see? Like, would you like to lean more on sort of anime approaches to science and fantasy or more science horror? You know, I think there's, they're never going to run out of stuff to do. Um, so there's nothing in particular that I'm looking for. Um, although I do kind of always like more mech stuff. I think the, the part of me that's still a 12 year old in love with mech warrior would probably love to see even more of that. Listen, I'm I'm a Gundam fan, so you, there you, you go, know, there you go. Blank for me. Um, so uh, last question: um, What uh, do you hope that readers take away from your new Starfighter comic? And do you have any final words for the readers before we wrap this thing up? Yeah, I hope that people really take away a love for the characters because for me, like as much as the plot is exciting and there's all sorts of, you know, stuff explodes and you see strange new worlds, the characters are really the heart of it for me. And so, uh, like I said, I've spent the last couple of years writing young adult romance novels. And so bringing that to Starfinder uh, really made me think a lot about these characters and what each of them is wrestling with emotionally, like how they change over the course of the, of the story and so I really hope that by the time people get to the end, they'll say, you know, I want to I want to know more about these characters, you know, because when you think about it, like you don't come back to X-Men for like the plot. You come back because you're in love with Wolverine and Magneto and all these characters. And so I hope that we can set the hook for people to want to know more about these folks. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, James. And uh, the <clears throat> the new Starfinder comic uh, will be coming out in June. So be sure to go to your local comic book store. I'm going to look up the exact date right now. Uh, it is, uh, oh, it's actually July 5th. So on July oh. 5th, uh, go and pick up, uh, you know, uh, Starfinder Angels of the Drift. The first issue comes out on July 5th. So, uh, and thank you very much again. Thanks so much for having me.